वेलकम टू माय व्यूज ऑन न्यूज सैटरडेज फर्स्ट वीडियो मेन न्यू स्टोरी इज फ्रॉम शेरे अक्सोम फ्रांस टगराए एरटिया बॉर्डर एरियाज वेयर फॉर डेज ईडीएफ एंड ईएनडीएफ एन इथियोपियन नेशनल डिफेंस फोर्स एंड एरटियन डिफेंस फोर्स दे बिन ट्राइंग टू मूव टूवर्ड्स टू मेजर सिटीज शेरे एंड अक्सोम दे ऑलरेडी कैप्चर्ड शरारो सेवरल डेज अगो नाओ दे हैव मेड सम टेरिटोरियल गेम्स दे आर मूविंग टूवर्ड्स दीज टू सिटीज डिटेल्स फॉर यू सेकेंडली जबूती व्यूअर्स वे आर अ फार ईसा सोमाली ईसा टेंशंस आर गोइंग टू एस्कलेट बिकॉज एफ आर यू डी हैज रिलीज अ स्टेटमेंट क्लेमिंग द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी फॉर अटैक ऑन अ कैंप ऑफ जबूतीज मिलट्री ऑन जबूती इथियोपिया बॉर्डर वॉट इज दिस ग्रुप सेंग वाई डिड द ग्रुप अटैक द कैंप इन विच सेवन सोल्जर्स ऑफ जबूती army were killed four were injured and six are still missing thirdly words uh, eritians uh, anti government opposition eritians in the us uh, anti eritian government they have protested in front of us state department tigrayans joined them as well and lastly words uh, William Ruto Kenyan president visited ethiopia two days ago After that we heard that the two leaders Ruto and Abi uh, had reached an agreement that Ethiopia would export wheat to Kenya while Ethiopia is planning to export wheat to Kenya WFP a few hours ago released a video saying that 23000 metric tons of wheat is on its way from Ukraine to Ethiopia i am unable to understand what is happening i mean on the one hand uh, wheat from ukraine is arriving in ethiopia because uh, millions are in need of wheat in need in need of food on the other hand ethiopia is preparing to export wheat to kenya firstly words uh, shere front shere shararo uh, Aksom, what is happening on these fronts? Because for days, EDF and ENDF have been trying to capture big cities like Shire and uh, Aksom, but they could not uh, get close to the cities. Uh, firstly, uh, I am working on a consolidated uh, report uh, which will cover all fronts. so in coming hours uh, you will be able to see uh, of the video which i am working on right now uh, the video will have details from all fronts where are front lines uh, on volo front on adrk front on all the fronts in this video we'll just focus on shir shiraro and akso shiraro already under uh, edf endf control for days visually confirmed as well adi hagre adi aiwala aviala also under edf endf control visual confirmation also uh, pictures were shared several pictures not just one several pictures were shared showing edf en uh, not edf endf soldiers and amhara special force soldiers uh, from adi hagre So, Adi Hagre, uh, Adi Eviala are under uh, EDF, ENDF. It seems, and now they are advancing towards Shire, and they have made some territorial gains in their advance towards Shire and towards uh, Aksum. Though it's difficult to uh, give you an exact picture of their territorial gains, but. what we are hearing is that fighting is now approaching it's approaching the cities it is not inside cities again i'm i'm uh, making it clear fighting is not in aksom city or in shire city it's very clear and uh, aksom shire are not being shelled it's not that uh, edf and endf are shelling the cities and they are about to fall no yes 
Don strikes, a strikes are being conducted. We know that on uh, the Dairo front in the past one week or so, several Don strikes, a strikes have been conducted on Shere City, on uh, the Dairo, close to the Dairo as well. Because this is now the one of the major fronts. Uh, uh, we can say this is the major front now because uh, EDF and ENDF uh, are deploying all their uh, strength uh, or large uh, portions of their uh, forces on this front. They want to uh, make some gains on these uh, two fronts. So, uh, what we have learnt is that now ongoing fighting is around uh, 10 to 20 kilometers away from Shire city. Around 20 kilometers away from Shire, you can say. Names of some places are being mentioned as well. They have come under ENDF, EDF control, but uh, I wouldn't share the names. Uh, uh, what we have confirmed through some uh, sources, uh, uh, what, uh, what we can say is that uh, uh, EDF and ENDF, they have managed to get close to the two cities, especially Shire. Not sure about Aksum, especially Shire. Though we have seen this advanced retreat, advanced retreat by ENDF and EDF for days. They managed to reach Adidaro a few days ago. Then they were pushed back. And then they started heavy air strikes, drone strikes on Adidaro, on Shire as well. So once again, their ground push is uh, producing some results. And uh, they are hoping to enter Shire. Not in coming hours. It will take some time if they are able to hold on to their gains. To the north of Shire, they have managed to reach... Uh, uh, close to an area around uh, 15 to 20 kilometers away from Shere city. On Aksom front as well, they have made some territorial gains towards the city, not in the city. Uh, secondly, we're Djibouti, where afar Somali East attentions will escalate. Uh, the two ethnic groups have been involved in a civil war as well in 1990s. Then a peace agreement was signed after three year long civil war. The group uh, became dormant, you can say. It turned into a political party. It split into two, one armed group and the, one, and the other was a political party. But the group is now uh, reborn, you can say, because we have not seen attacks from uh, FRUD in Djibouti in recent months. It means that this group is now reborn or it is reactivated. Front for Restoration of Unity and Democracy, FRUD, has claimed the responsibility for attack on Djibouti's uh, military base on Djibouti-Ethiopia border. The group basically uh, of a far uh, ethnic group uh, of far fighters uh, uh, says in the statement that this attack was carried out in response to provocations by uh, the government forces and arrests of residents close to this military camp and it was conducted, the attack was carried out in response to uh, attacks by government forces against uh, FRUD followers. In the attack, uh, seven Djibouti soldiers were killed, four were injured, six uh, are still missing. Uh, and we are seeing that whenever there is a border fighting between Afars and uh, Somalis uh, in Ethiopia, uh, when there is fighting between the two regions in border areas, we always see its impact in Djibouti as well, where Afars and Somalis uh, uh, clashes start there. Afar neighborhoods are attacked. Uh, mainly Somali Isas are in power in Djibouti. So Afars come under attack there. And uh, now when FRUD is reactivated, it means that uh, we'll see its implications, its impact uh, on Ethiopia as well. 
Djibouti is not naming Ethiopia, but uh, FRUD in the past had some links with groups in the Afar region of Ethiopia. So that is why if FRUD becomes stronger, it could be a regional uh, issue for Ethiopian and Djibouti's governments. Thirdly, viewers, Eritreans protested uh, a few hours ago in front of your state department in Washington, D.C. The protest was for peace. It was against the involvement of Eritrean, military Eritrean government in Tigray conflict. Yakal moment, uh, Eritrean opposition group uh, was campaigning for this uh, demonstration and some other groups as well. Tigrayans joined as well. The protesters uh, met with U.S. State Department officials and they handed over some documents to U.S. State Department officials. Uh, small protest, not uh, massive demonstrations, but uh, uh, most of Eritrean demonstrations in the U.S. Uh, were in support of the war. Eritrean and Ethiopian diaspora communities protested on several occasions in the U.S. Uh, in the past one year or so. Now, uh, opposition Eritrean groups are also organizing themselves in the U.S. Tigrayans already organized. They have been protesting for around two years. Now, Eritreans are joining them. So, Eritreans and Tigrayans jointly protested uh, yesterday in front of U.S. State Department uh, uh, calling for end to the war, calling for end to Eritrean military involvement in Tigray. We have some clips for you showing uh, the demonstration which was held a few hours ago. Watch the clip. Lastly, viewers, uh, two days ago, William Ruto, newly elected Kenyan president, visited Ethiopia. He was all a praise for PM Abi. He called him a genius. By the way, only fear is that uh, Ruto said that Ethiopians uh, were lucky to have a genius for a leader. Only fear is that PM Abi will definitely take it seriously. Uh, because once his mother uh, called him a king and till today he takes it seriously that he is a king. He has royal uh, ambitions. So that is why I think Ruto should have been a little restrained uh, in PM Abi's appreciation. Uh, Ruto and Abi reached an agreement that uh, Ethiopia would uh, export wheat uh, to Kenya. Ethiopia reached an agreement with Kenya regarding export of electricity as well from GERD a few months ago. Now Kenya will buy wheat from Ethiopia. Ethiopian wheat produce is rising on yearly basis. My point is that Ethiopians are in need of wheat as well. WFP just a few hours ago shared a video which I have for you. The video shows the departure, the journey of uh, a ship carrying wheat for Ethiopia. Journey from Ukraine. Ukrainian wheat on its way towards Ethiopia. 23,000 metric tons of wheat uh, is going to arrive in Ethiopia. And WFP says Ethiopians are in need of food aid. And this uh, wheat delivery will help Ethiopians a lot. Question is, why is that Ethiopia wants to remain dependent upon aid organizations? 
why is it planning to start exporting of wheat while its own people are dying of hunger they, they don't have sufficient uh, food and uh, wfp is importing food for them so i am unable to understand this contradiction government should first feed its own people then it can obviously export v2 i have a clip for you uh, shared by wfp about the departure of this ship from ukraine for ethiopia watch the clip viewers thank you for watching